when my troubles surround me and I didn't have a despair Lord you told me that you'd be right there it seemed like all my troubles had just begun I didn't have to worry no more they were right Every day, I love calling your name. Oh, Jesus, nobody but Jesus. Every day, yes, it is. Your name is still the same. Yes, it is. I remember the time I felt so all alone. When I needed you, Jesus, all I had to do was call. Sometimes in the morning, sometimes at night, when I got up my knees, everything was all right. Oh, Jesus, nobody but Jesus, every day. Disciples were a little, a little despondent, you know. Jesus was telling them about how he was going to be crucified. He was going to have to go away. And in St. John, the 14th chapter, and I'm going to move around here, he said in the 15th verse, he said, if you love me, if you do, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, you'll keep my words, and, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, you know, another comforter. Jesus was their strength. He was their, he was their comfort. He was their master. He was their teacher. And I'll give you another comforter that he may say, I'm going away, but I'll be coming back. He said, I'll be coming back. He said, but I'm going to, I'm going to give you a confidence that he may abide with you forever. That's the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. He says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. People who don't know Jesus, who haven't received Jesus, cannot receive that spirit of truth, that spirit of, 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 of what God promised, the one that endues us with power from on high. And, and, and he said this, he said, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwells in you and he shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. Praise God Almighty. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ. I will not, I'm going away, but I will not leave you comfortless. Thank you, Jesus. And in the Greek, it sort of transfers to I will not leave you as orphans. Hallelujah. I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send the Holy Ghost. To continue your guidance, your parental guidance, <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> praise God Almighty. And God, the sheep, God's people know this, they, they get it. And then it says, in, on down here, in the 25th verse, it says, these things have I spoken unto you, being present, while I'm with you now, being present with you, but the comforter, 
which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in what? My name. He shall teach you. The ministry of, of Jesus is still going on. The hope by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God. He shall teach you all things as more to be taught, more to learn, and he and he will bring even things that are historical biblical data and fact. He will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I said to you. The Holy Ghost, praise God. The Holy, he, he's, he's the teacher. And he, he went on to declare how he's going to lead, lead, leave them with his peace. So on over, in the 15th chapter, and I'm not going to get all, all this way. It says, well, okay, in the 25th verse, 26th verse, it says, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send. First he said, listen, he said, the father's going to send him in my name. Now catch this. Then he said, whom I'm going to send. Praise God. I'm going to send unto you from the father. Even, come on, I, I hope, you, I don't know if you got that or not. Praise God. Even the spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the father, he shall do what? He shall testify of me. And ye also shall do what? Bear witness because you've been with me from the beginning. The Holy Ghost testifies of Jesus. Yes, it does. Uh, of the Lord Jesus. And in the 16th chapter, since a lot of this, when Jesus was speaking about himself, about him, uh, and, and about the Holy Ghost. And it says uh, in the fifth verse, it says, but now I go my way to him that sent me. I'm going back to the Father. And none of you ask me where the goes now, but because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart because I, I let you know I have to leave. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is necessary, it's expedient for you that I go away. I must go away. For if I don't, if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I'll send him. Praise God. I'll send him unto you. And when he's come, he will reprove the world of sin and of, and of righteousness and of judgment. And then it goes on to say in the 12th verse, I have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. Your, your hearts are heavy, filled with sadness, because you don't really understand everything I'm saying, but it, it, you, you'll see it and you'll appreciate it. He said, you can't, you can't take everything I need to tell you now, but how be it? When he, the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Ghost, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. Isn't that amazing? He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Where's the Holy Ghost going to hear it? In the courts of heaven. And he'll speak it. Whatever he hears, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He'll give you prophetic utterances. He'll give you insight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And in the 14th verse, it says, he shall do what? He shall glorify me. He shall glorify who? Jesus. He shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. He's going to take from my, for what I have. What belongs to me, he's going to show it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. Everything that the Father has belongs to me. Everything that I have belongs to the Father. And we know that's because they're one. They're one. The Godhead is one. The Holy Ghost is part of, part of that Godhead. Yes, sir. But he shall glorify Jesus. Yes, sir. And, and uh, after sitting there at the, at the table this morning, I said, this, maybe that's why Jesus won all the... They put them all to have the, all the songs about him. In any ministry, I don't care who, uh, saved, some wouldn't. And Jesus taught the, the things that the, the apostles wrote about, that they talked about in the epistles of Paul and, and John and Jude and some of the rest. They learned all that through the Holy Ghost. That was the continued teaching of Jesus the, and the glorifying the Lord. Any ministry, church, no matter who it is, 
if anybody who prioritizes anything above the Lord Jesus Christ is not a ministry of God. Come on now. No, the Holy Ghost will glorify the Lord Jesus. And there's reason. Hallelujah. Jesus is the key. And I know people do. We do. We, we call God uh, sometimes Jehovah God. Yes. And people aren't mistaken when, when they say, and, and that's another name. The, what's another name for Jehovah God? That the people scared of, really. Hmm? Somebody said it, I thought. Yahweh. Yeah. Yahweh, Jehovah God. You know. But the way people have taken the name, just the name, without knowing him and trying to make something based off, and they forget him, they kick Jesus out of everything. Mm -mm. That's wrong. Anybody. That's what Jesus even said when people come. They're going to talk about me and preach me. And they're going to be out of pocket. They're going to be wrong. Any ministry of God is going to, and God's going to involve himself, it, it, just every bit of him. In, in his ministry, God the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, they're all involved. The name Jesus is so very important. And, we, and I, believe that's, I believe that's what God wants. And I believe that God wants to bless his people. Yes, sir. It's been that way from, from the beginning. And you'll find, and, and we're going to read this in the book of Acts. Thank you, Jesus. Acts, the, the 10th chapter. Starting with the 38th verse. Hallelujah. It's amazing how though God does not need us, never has. He's always loved us. Loved us before he even created. Formed the earth. Loved us before he formed the first man. Made every provision for the man before man was created. Everything he would need from the earth provided. Already done. Everything that he would need because he knew the man would sin. Everything that he knew man would need for the salvation of his eternal soul. Thank you, Jesus. He provided it. Through the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. He provided everything. And of course, the breath that it would take for man to become a living soul. After form, being formed, he was still just a corpse with no life. Until Almighty God, our Father, breathed like Numa, breath, spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Breathed it into it. It's God's doing. God loves man. He loves people. And those who belong to him, hallelujah. God is always, and, 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 he, and he, he told him, he said, I just, I just hear, oh, from the beginning, just hear my voice. Adam heard the voice walking. How was that so? Because the Lord, the Lord God was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They've always, always operated together. Father, Son, which Word, and Holy Spirit of God. He said, just, if you would just obey my voice. He said, yes, I, he said, I did, I got other things I've laid out for you. I want you to do, take care of, this pleases me. And if you live in faith and by faith, Praise God. You, 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 you'll make it because you're not doing it by your own strength. You're doing it by the, my faith. By the faith of God. And then our day is through the faith Lord. of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're Praise saved name, by Lord. grace Thank through you, faith. You, and that not of ourselves. We're not saved because, well, I, I just thought I'd make a decision and get saved. Uh -uh. It's because, if you believe it's because the Lord Jesus Christ has given you of his faith. 
allowed us to believe. God himself, God allows us. We don't just love God. God allows us to love him. God, give, he's given, he loves us. He loves us and he's given in our hearts love for him. That's a blessing. That's such a, a blessing that is really unexplored. The depths and riches of God's love and God's mercy. And so many people will never know, so many church folks will never know the, the depth of God's love, the depth of God's riches. Everything that we have is from God. And, and just one scripture. Let me read the scripture and try to um, and move on. And it says here in, in Acts 10 38. Yes, yes, yes. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? The Holy Ghost and with power. When, once he was born. And again, we have to go back to his birth. To the birth of Jesus. How did Mary say, well, how can I, when the angel brought her the news, she said, how, how can I be, uh, conceive? And I, I, don't, I don't know a man. I haven't known a man. Yes, sir. He said, that, say, the, the power of the highest is going to come over you. Yes, and you're going to conceive for, through, through the Holy Ghost. God is going to impregnate you with, what, and what, is, what does that mean? What does that mean? That Jesus was born with the holy blood of God in him. Come on now. The word was made flesh. That wasn't human blood. That, the thing that, that, that which is in you is, is that, I don't know what, what you call it, that when you conceive, it's in your womb, it's gonna be from God. So he was born, all the work of God. God the Father was involved in the birth, the Holy Spirit, and, and the Son in her womb. Produce the son. The word was made flesh. And God anointed, when Jesus was born, he anointed him with the Holy Ghost. And with that, once being anointed, anointed by that same thing that, that, that caused him to be conceived in the flesh, in the flesh now, he went up and with power, he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed. Hallelujah. Who were oppressed in the, of, of the devil, for God was with him. They've always, God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, have all the interest of his people, of his people and humankind, have always been at the heart. That's God's ministry. That's part of his ministry. Praise God. So thank the Lord. We're going to get in, into this just a little bit today. Just a little bit about the, the name Jesus. And and won't be anything you, you've not heard before, the same, the same thing. But I believe the Lord wants us to talk about it today. Today, I just think he wants us to talk about his son, the, the name Jesus. So we're going to go to the book of Philippians. Thank God for his mercy. I'm so grateful, and I know that, that you are to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to be saved. Yes, to be saved, to know that I'm saved, to know that, yes, that my name is written in heaven. Yes, Hallelujah. And you find that when Jesus sent the disciples out, he, he sent them out, and, and they came back rejoicing. And we've been over that here lately. Jesus, even the demons. And if you have a like to study Bible or something, it's that that were devils because there's only one devil. And people just they say devils, but and, and true, they come, they're demonic spirits, is what, what they are. But they came back naturally what they said was even the demons, demon. Demons are subject to us, not because of who we are. Through thy name. It's all about Jesus. It's through the name. What? Praise God. What about that name? It's the authority of the name. Hallelujah. It's the authority of the name of Jesus. Praise God. 
the name Jesus. Jesus. I believe that that banner up there, I, I believe Bishop never said to me how, how, he, how it came to be or whatever, but I, I believe God gave him that as, as, through inspiration. I, I do. I believe that's God gave him that. That banner that we call the banner of the kingdom displaying the name Jesus. That name, Jesus, judge, eternal savior, and we're in him as what? United sons. United sons of God. The, 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 the blood, the drops of blood shed on Calvary's, Calvary's cross. 24 drops for the 24 elders mentioned in, in Revelation. It's going to be around the throne of God and, and God, the Godhead. Three, in what, three attributes of God. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. In the one God. Praise God. We went over that the other week. Spirit of, you know how, how God was there. God, Spirit of God moved, actually meant like to hover over the face of the waters. And God said, it was God the Father, the, 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 the Holy Spirit of God, and said, the Word of God were all a part of creation, working together. Three and one. Yes, and then you got the, the, the 12 ways of water, water for, for the word of God, of course. And there are 12 representing the 12 tribes of Israel. The white is for, is for the righteousness of the saints. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ho, ho. No, I'm not going to do it today. Come. Oh, man. The righteousness of the saints that we have received from the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. He took all our sins. He died for our sins that we could become, that we could be and receive the righteousness of God. No human righteousness is good enough at all to approach God, to stand in the presence of God. Because the best of them is as a briar. Man's righteousness is like filthy rags. So we had to receive righteousness. Not just because we're righteous, we're not. That, but that does represent the righteousness of the saints which we have received from the Lord Jesus Christ. God even said in Isaiah how he's, he's going to uh, give us, uh, put on us a, he is a what? A robe of righteousness. Oh, come on now. Woo! How do I look today? How does, how does my robe look? Come on, don't, don't look at mine. My, my, we can wear, we, we're in rags. Man's righteous is like filter rags, but God has covered us and given us a robe of righteousness. Hallelujah. Father, I didn't know you were going to take us here today, but I, I thank you. That's what that's for. That, the, the, the wife's for the righteousness of the saints, and that's all, all that's from God. And then the, the, the gold fringe around the edges, is, is the, the gold so it represents the trials of the saints. The trying of your faith is more precious. Dear saints of God, more precious than that of gold. Hallelujah. You're not going to live this life without trial. You're not going to live this life without, without your faith being tried. You say you trust God. We, we say we believe God. We love. Oh, hallelujah. That's going to be tested. Hallelujah. That's going to be tried. And all that. I thank God that 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 is that that had to come from God. Yes, that had to be inspired of the Holy Spirit Himself, yes, of God. All oh, this represents what God has done for us, yes, all because He loved us, yes, all because of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where was I? Let's see. Let's we let, let, let's go here, and it's really amazing. We're going to go to Philippians, and, and we're going to just. Moving here today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is, I believe he is absolutely sovereign. He is absolute authority. Who, who he gives authority to us. But his authority is his. He is. There's no other God beside him. He said in so many places in Isaiah, he, he said that I am the Lord, your redeemer. Yes, Praise God. If you, 
what? God, he said Jesus. And in, in other places, like, and beside me, there is no savior, more or less. He, he is redeemer, redeemer, he is savior. I'm God and there is none else. He's God yes, by him absolute. Yes, sir. Say, where's another guy? Show him to him. Say, I, I know not any. Yes, Saith the Lord, he is God. Yes, and for God to welcome us in the face of all the universe, into all, in the face of all creation, to welcome us into his presence, into his family, and call us his sons, his daughters. And the day's coming when he's going to put us on display and show all creation what he's done. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. Thank you, Father. I look forward to it. I know you do too. Yes, sir. Praise God. Look forward to it. We, we, we know him, we interact with him. With God's spirit, with this spirit of holiness, we react in it, with it. It touches us, it moves us, brings tears. The, yes, sir. We react with Jesus, but I, and we've met him. Some have, some have not. But I look forward to the day when we can, I want to see him, I do. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes. I want to see Jesus. Yes. That's yes. what I want. I want to see him. Yes, sir. Yes, yes I do. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Praise God. We are. We're going to see him. Praise God that day is coming. Yes. It's all because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. The grace of God, the love of God, God sacrificing his son. Never been apart throughout all eternity. Never. So in Philippians, we're going to read here in the second chapter, yes, sir. starting with, with the fifth verse. Let this mind be in you, which also in Christ Je was also in Christ Jesus. Yes. What man was that? Who being in the form of God, Come on. thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He thought it not robbery. He didn't. He didn't, he didn't think it was anything wrong. He, he, he didn't want to call, it wasn't calling, causing God any offense. No, it wasn't doing something wrong to be, he knew he was equal with God. They are one. Yes, sir. But in the flesh, he was in the flesh. But being in the form of God, God incarnated in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, his son. Yes, sir. And he says, let this man be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Though he was who he was as he walked and who he is. Almighty, Jesus. holy God, there when, when the earth was created, when the heavens were created, spoken into existence, that was his, his voice. His word, that was the voice of God, his word. Yes, sir. He was the word yes, sir. Yes, of creation. When the Bible speaks of God, said, said was Jesus. <laughs> that was Jesus. That was him. And he knew. He had no problems with his identity. He didn't have any problems like that at all. He knew who he was. But he had a heart of humiliation in the flesh. He wasn't there to like vaunt himself. Yes, sir. A draw attention to it. It wasn't there for that. He knew attention would come anyway when people saw him healing the sick and casting out demons. That, that would happen, but he always gave credit to the Father. Yes, sir. He never tried to, he never tried to make him see that, that pride. Yes, sir. Religious pride is a dangerous thing. Yes, Spiritual pride is dangerous. Sometimes people want to. No, do stuff just for the pride of it, yes, for, for the rec just for the recognition. Yeah, it's Amen. not about that. Amen. Nothing is about us. Amen. Nothing is about me. Yes, Nothing sir. is about, it's really it's about God and what he says and how he says we should operate. That's it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
God loved us and he gave Jesus. Yes, sir. So he thought it not robbery to be equal with God and instead he did something. What, what did he do? But made himself of no reputation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And took upon him the form of a servant. Thank you, Father. And was made in the likeness of man. Hallelujah. Of men. Go ahead, brother. And being found in fashion as a man. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He humbled himself. Hallelujah. And became obedient unto death. He humbled himself yes, sir. and obeyed the call of death. Yes, sir. Isn't that something? Humbled himself and became obedient. Yes, sir. And that's why he, he told him, and you've heard it before, you've read it. As he told Paul, or told the disciples or whoever, no man takes my life, but I give it. Yes. He, hum he had to humble himself unto death. Yes, sir. Praise God. Can you imagine that? All of us, what if Jesus stared, we're going to die. Yes, he, if, if it had meant to be that if he wasn't here for sacrifice as the Lamb of God, well, first of all, I don't think he ever would have come in the flesh. But other than that, Jesus never would have died. Yes, sir. Eternal life of God was in him. He became obedient unto death, even the, he humbled himself. And he said, I can, I can call my father and, 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 uh, and ask him to send 12 legions of angels. Nothing, nothing has authority over me no, sir. to take me. Amen. But he humbled himself. Yes, sir. Oh, if people could, now he did that, the Lord of glory. If people could only find it in their hearts yes, sir. to humble themselves under the voice of God. Yes, sir. Come on now. Yes, sir. If people could find it in their heart, that Jesus, the Lord of glory, yes, sir. humbled himself for our sake so we could be saved. Yes, sir. He knew, he knew the stakes, he knew what, what, what was required, he knew what it took for our deliverance. And to suffer. And he humbled himself and became obedient to death so we could. And man, and, and some of us, it's, it's just pitiful. Human beings, religious human beings, so-called Jesus people, whoever, are, are so stubborn sometimes that we won't humble ourselves. As, as David said, David said in one place, he got, and I don't know if I wrote that down or not, how he humbled himself. When, his, when people were persecuting him, his people that he thought loved him and were his friends and all, he said, when they ran into problems, they like, so I, I, I humbled my soul with fasting. That's one way. That's how you, you do. You, fasting is, is, a, is a sense of humbling yourself under the hand of God. Yes, sir. Fasting is not done. So what, what about the real fast? Well, they, they're both still in, in, still in play. Yes, sir. Yeah. The spiritual fast and the, nat, the natural fast, because the natural is connected. It's a spiritual thing, actually. And that's why Jesus didn't, didn't say, if you fast, like in St. Matthew 6, yes, we talk about fasting and praying. He, said, he didn't say, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrite. He said, no. Nah. And he didn't say, if you pray. He didn't say, if you pray, don't be like. No, he said, when you pray, didn't he? Yes, sir. Yeah, when. So, so it's expected of believers to pray. Yes, the Bible yes, says sir. to pray without ceasing. Yes, sir. And he didn't say, and if you fast, uh, he said, when you do. When, yes, so it's expected of us from the Lord that we should fast. Amen. Yes, sir. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost will lead you in, into that. You know, you do it the way he says. We can't humble ourselves under God. We can't humble ourselves enough to obey his word and, 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 and to, to, to lay aside at times malice and, and hypocrisies and envies and evil speaking and gossiping. Back, back. You know, all, all that. We, we, we can't humble ourselves. We said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a good, but we like to think of ourselves as good so-called Christians without humbling ourselves under the word of God. That's not the way it goes. He became, oh, he gave himself, became obedient unto death. So God did something. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And given him a name which is above every name. Yes, praise God. What other name is greater? None. 
None is greater. And people have had the gall to name them, some of their children Jesus or whatever, different languages or whatever. But there's still none other name greater than Jesus, yes, sir. the son of the living God, Jesus of Nazareth. He's given him a name that's above every name. Yes, sir. Every name. Why? That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Thank you, Jesus. And it's going to happen. Of things in heaven Hallelujah. and things in earth. Thank you, Jesus. And things under the and earth. things under the earth. At the name of Jesus, yes, there is no other name greater. And it's really amazing. And, and that name. Now, this, and, and the Bible, you find that the word of God never contradicts itself. It's just that people don't have the revelation. They don't yes, have the Holy Spirit to, to lead them into it. Yes, and then you wonder why it says in Psalm 138 how the God, and you can get it if you want. I think 138 is in the early part of the, well, you can get it. The, has magnified what? Your word Above all your name. Yes, sir. Above the name El Shaddai, Jehovah, Yahweh, and give me some more. Uh, Jehovah Jireh. Yes, sir. You know, El Gabor, you've magnified your word above all your name. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, Woo! Whoa, well, hold on, honey. Hey. Yes, because his word is Jesus. Yes, sir. Praise God. Amen. Yes, sir. So there's no other name like yes, that one. Amen. Jesus. Yes, sir. God never contradicts himself. Never. Yes, sir. Praise God. So let's 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 go to Hebrews right yes, quick. Yes, sir. Hebrews, first chapter, the book of Hebrews. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And the word of God says here, it says, God, who at sundry times, different times in the age and history of man, and in divers manners, in different ways, spake in time past unto the fathers by the old patriarchs, by the prophets. God spoke to them in, in different ways, different th by his spirit, through his anointing. He said, sundry times, different times, divers ways, he, he spake unto the fathers by the prophets. Has in these last days spoken unto us by whom? By his son, by the Lord Jesus Christ, who he has appointed heir of all things by whom he made the world. Hallelujah. By his son. He's made him heir of everything. And that's why Jesus told him, St. Matthew, he said, all power, didn't he say that? Is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Everything is his. Listen, and he's made him heir of all things by whom, by Jesus, he's made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, the brightness of God's glory, and the express image of his person. The, the image of the person of God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but this, is, this excites me. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. It excited me this morning and, and right now, too. Jesus, the express, the brightness of his glory and express image of his person, who being the, the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person yes, and upholding all things by what? By the word of his power. When he has by himself purged our sins, he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Being made, Jesus was made so much better than the angels as he, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, hallelujah. This day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be my son. Hallelujah. That's all talking about Jesus. Everything revolves around the Lord Jesus. All right. Now, St. Matthew 16, brother. St. Matthew 16, 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, 
Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Hallelujah. And because, why? Why did he have, he, he knew what they were saying about him. He knew they were calling him all kinds of names. Some had already called him uh, Beelzebub, you know. He knew they were calling him some of everybody. He knew that some people were trying to associate him with some of the old prophets and holy men of God of old. He, he knew, but he wanted a response from his disciples. Yes, sir. And people, you know, I've heard people say that God is who you want him to be. No, he's not. <laughs> he is not. Yes, sir. God is who Amen. he said he is. Yes, sir. That's who God Amen. is. Yes, sir. God is God. Amen. And we cannot define him according to our emotions, our human flesh. Yes, sir. He's not who you want him to be. Amen. No, God is who he is. Now, if he said, okay, I'll be who you want him to be, okay, then fine, that's who he is. Yes, sir. But first and foremost, God is who he said he is. Who is God to you? Yes, sir. Who is the Lord Jesus to you? What value, what place does he hold in your life and your thinking and your heart and your mind, your home life, your, your work life, your, your, your everyday living? What priority does he have? So Jesus said, well, who, who do people say I am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, <laughs> mm -hmm. some Elias, Hallelujah. and others Jeremiah's. They thought that, the, that you might have received the spirit of one of these prophets. Okay, some people say you're Jeremiah. Or uh, one the of prophets. the prophets. Uh huh. He said unto them, but whom ye, whom say ye that I am? And who, just think about that for a minute. Who do you say he is? Now be careful now. Be, make, sure, make sure that you know who he is. He is Lord of all. You call Jesus that, praise the Lord. You know, no, nobody can really say this. That can be explained. Nobody can really say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Yes, Only by the Holy Ghost. They can't really say it with everything they have. With all that they are, they can't say it. Yes, sir. With their life, their belief, their soul. They can't pour their, their lives and saying that Jesus Christ is Lord. The only way you can do that is by the Holy Ghost. When God has, when, when you know, and when, not just that you know it, but you have become the, the complete possession of God. When you know that your body, your life, your mind is the temple of the Holy Ghost that God dwells in you. Amen. And you move by his will, by his spirit, by his word. When, you, when, when that's the way it is, not just why well, I know this. You know, we, you, you ever talk to a child that's always getting in, into some mess? And, and, and children are rather... They're pretty adept at, at, at knowing how to skirt around things with words. Because why? They know the proper thing to say sometimes when you ask them questions. Say, so Johnny, how was school today? Oh, it was good. We went on, on the, on, on for recess. We, we, had, we had a good time outside and, and we operated computers and, and uh, we did some math. And I did some math. Here's my math. And so it was good. But Johnny left out some things. We went outside for recess and I knocked so-and-so out. I got tired of him. I was pulling up porn on the computer. I did some, I got some math, but I copied. it. But I, I didn't even go to science class. See, see, they know what to say. Yes, sir. You know, kids, you, you, you've run into kids. We've been like that. Yes, sir. We know exactly what to say and what not to say. <laughs> yes, sir. So Jesus told some people one time, he said, well, now why do you call me Lord? Lord means to be absolute master. And, and, it, and it goes a little farther. It, do, it does go a little farther than that. But absolute master of my life. Governor. Praise God Almighty. Jesus is Lord. Yes, Hallelujah. God the Father is Lord. Yes, sir. Jesus Christ the Son is Lord. The Holy Ghost is Lord in the church. Lord God. 
Adonai. Yes, sir. Jesus is Lord. Yes, sir. So who are people saying? Who do you say? Who is he to you? Just think about it. You don't have to say anything out loud. But just, who is he to you really? Who, how do you receive him? How, what do you recognize Jesus as being? So he said, what do you, what, so what do you say? Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. Thank you, Jesus. The Hallelujah. Son of the living God. You are the Christ. Yes, sir. You are the Messiah. Yes, you are the Messiah, the Mashiach. You, you're the anointed, the yes, Christos. You are the anointed yes, of God. Yes, sir. Born of God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Born of the nature of God, the fulfillment of God's prophecies and promises yes, that he would visit us. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. You are the son of the living God. There's never been any other person like that. Only firstborn, Jesus. You are the son of the living God. Yes, sir. You are Lord. And Jesus answered him and, 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 and just commented on how blessed he was. Yes, sir. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Hallelujah. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Hallelujah. For Simon. flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. So you just didn't, didn't knowledge this up or you didn't read it this morning in the, uh, the uh, where, where were they at? Caesarea? Yes, sir. Philippi. Philippi. You didn't pick up the Caesarea early morning edition Gazette. Yes, sir. And read that in the paper this morning. Yes, sir. You got your news yes, from on high, didn't you? Yes, sir. <laughs> Jesus knew. Flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. Yes, sir. But my father, he knew that Peter wasn't just speaking words. It wasn't just knowledge or something. Somebody had told him or something. He just figured out he knew that he, this was true and real to him in his spirit, he recognized who Jesus was and he accepted him as such. Yes, sir. You are the son of the living God. Yes, sir. Praise God. And I know you've had some revelations from the Lord. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yes, sir. And I don't know if, if God opened that up to Peter Right at that appointed time when Jesus was asking about it, but it was a, a revelation. He is that Jesus, you're the Christ. You're the Son of the Living God. Yes, Praise God. It's not you're not just some kind of religious icon. You're not he, he, and he wasn't self-seeking. In, in his prayer, he said, I presented your name. Your name. I've given them your name, Father. Keep them. Yes, sir. Through your name. What name did he give? What name did he give? Jesus. Go into all the world, teach all nations, baptizing them in what? In the name. The name, the name Jesus. Yes, sir. In the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Ghost, Jesus. And that's why the disciples, even those who... But, and something didn't, didn't you ask me that this week? How did they? You know, yes, about something else. I believe even the seventy disciples, most of them who at, later on they turned, they left Jesus. They walked off from Jesus, but he had commissioned them. Yes, sir. At one time for a purpose, and he empowered them yes. through the word of his mouth. He sent them. Go in all the cities and whatever, wherever they receive you. Okay, you sit, you stay there with them. You eat such things as they have, and and, and, and heal the sick that are there. Yes, sir. And and they did. The, 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 about seven of them. They left. They went, and they came back excited. Oh Jesus! Even the demons again yes, sir. are subject to us. How? To us? No, sir. Through your name. name. Yes, sir. It's the name. The authority, when you know who he is and you receive him as such, you, the creator of everything. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. All things were made by him, for him. It's all about Jesus, the savior of the world. Yes, sir. They, 
the name, the authority for everything we need to accomplish in this life is all found in that name, Jesus. And it can't be used just well, in the name of Jesus. I tell, see, some people, oh, and, and it's irritating when you hear people talk like that, you know? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, and, and they mean they mean it not, not at all, you know? Amen. Yes, sir. It's, that doesn't move anything. That'll get you in trouble yes. more than anything else. Sure. You're the Christ, the son of the living God. And that revelation came from God himself. And, he, and, 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 and Jesus said, I, I'm going to say, I say unto you that you're Peter, you're, you're a little rock. And, a, and, a, and I'll build this, I'll build the church on this rock, on the faith that you have. Yes, sir. In who I am. Yes, sir. That's the cornerstone. That's it. Yes, I'm the cornerstone. I'm going to build the church on that. Not I'm, I'm going to build the church on Peter. Yes, now let's go to the book of Acts. Book of Acts, second chapter, starting with the 32nd verse. Speaking of Jesus, he, he said, this Jesus, now this is after, now this is amazing. I think this is Peter talking, who, uh, Peter was the one who denied him when they came to get him in, in the garden. After all the, the disciples fled, they hid out. Peter took a sword, cut one of them's ear off. The servant of the high priest cut his ear off. And they sort of hid out. When, at the crucifixion, nobody showed up but the women. And, and John, I believe John was there. The disciple he loved so much. And the women sort of stood far off. But his, his mother, Mary, I think she came a little closer. Jesus was stripped naked. He was, he was, he, they yes. did the best they could. They, but he suffered all that humiliation. Yes, he was, oh, everything that happened to him happened so he could bless us. He, the blood shed for our salvation. Without the shedding of blood, no remission. He, he was humiliated, beaten, all that stuff. Humiliated so that we could live in glory. Not just later on. In glory, yes, later on. He took our shame. Yes, he did. Yes, he took our shame. That's what, and, and you have to think about, just go over that message again about everything that Jesus took care of at the cross. For us, he did all that for us so that we wouldn't have to bear it. We wouldn't have to bear the brunt and the weight of it. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thinking about he, he, he bore the weight of the cross, everything yes, for us. Anyway, the book of Acts, second chapter, thirty-second verse. This Jesus has God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, praise God, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he shed forth this which ye see now and hear. Peter at first hiding out, didn't do anything, and and even. After, after Jesus came before his ascension, he revealed himself to them. Yes, they still weren't doing a lot of, no ministering. They weren't going around like healing people. They weren't preaching. They weren't saying anything. But they were in the temple, the Bible says, daily rejoicing and, 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 and praising God. They were. But they were not filled with the Holy They received the Holy Breath, the Holy Holy Ghost from Jesus said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. When he appeared unto the eleven of them. But when, when that gift, the Holy, Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost was poured out from on high, when they were baptized by Jesus with the Holy Ghost, poured out, everything broke loose. They were preaching in other tongues, everything. And when they were called in question about it, Peter, you know, Jesus already said, you feel, he, he gave him like a badge of leadership before he left. Yes. Peter stood and he was explaining it to him. This, all this stuff didn't happen to David. I mean, he knew the scriptures, everything. Yes. And here he is teaching about what they just witnessed, the outpouring 
of the Holy Spirit of God. Wherefore being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, he's poured it out, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said unto whom? My Lord, thank you Jesus, sit thou on my right hand until I make all your enemies thy footstool. The Lord God, the Lord the Father said unto my Lord, the Lord God, Jesus, sit on my right hand, the right hand of my authority and power until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly, this man has so much boldness. And it all came because he was filled with the Holy Ghost. That's, what, that's when it happened. They were in the temple praising God and rejoicing, but the, the, the Spirit hadn't been poured out yet. And when it did, see at first they didn't say nothing about Jerusalem, everybody knowing about it, but when the Spirit was poured out, Everybody still come together. These men must be drunk. So, but, and everybody heard people preaching and speaking of the wonderful works of God. You know they were testifying about Jesus in their own native tongues and languages. And Peter had boldness. He, he was hiding. When he was around the fire and the people, when they had Jesus in that, that mock trial, and the lady said, hey, what you, what, what you want is, no, no, I don't know him. He even cussed somebody out. Second or third time they asked him, oh, I don't know. But here he's standing in front of the, the authorities, the Pharisees, everybody, preaching about Jesus. And he let them, and, 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 and set the record straight. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both what? Lord and Christ. He is God and he is the Messiah, the anointed one. He's the only one who can save. Now, in, in the third chapter, I don't know if in, in the third chapter, and of course, when, when the people heard it, they, they said, what can we do? And, and he told them what to do. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for remission of sins. He, he told them what to do. So in the, in the third chapter, 12th verse, I'm just going to read through this. When Peter and John were going into the temple to pray, we, we've had a lot of this here recently, but I gotta, we just got to go back over it today. Yes, Praise God. Lay, hallelujah, Jesus told the man. I don't know if they gave his name here. No, no a certain lame man. And, and again, I hate to be repetitious, but it's true. I mean, can you imagine? How this man never knew what it was to walk. I always laid at the gate and saw other people, but he never was born like that. And he, by the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Ghost from Jesus, yes, praise God. Jesus is, you know, he is. If you, well, we, we've been over that message. We're not going to go back over that one again today. He is the baptizer. And all the, the, the disciples said, John, John the Baptist talked about it. There's one coming after me who's mighty and I, he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So this man, all this, all this action started taking place from the day of Pentecost, fr from that day. And he looked at him, this man who was laying there needing help and living the best life he, he could live. And looking for a blessing of, of uh, some alms gift, a charitable donation or whatever from Peter and John. And think about this, everybody, brothers and sisters in Christ. If you have been saved, you have something that everybody needs. And at that time, maybe Peter and John didn't have any money, like any gold or silver in their pockets. But he said something, such as I have, praise God. Ooh, I felt that in my chest. <laughs> and what I have, hallelujah, Jesus. What I have, I give to you. 
in the name of Jesus. I have the authority of the name Jesus. I have the power of God in, in my life. You have to think about yourself like that. In the name of Jesus. That is the name, saints, of God. Please know that. Faith in his name. And we're going to read that. It's the name of Jesus. That's what gets us through life. Jesus. That, he is. That's the hope of glory. Jesus. The Christ. The Messiah. The Lamb of God. Everything's about him. He, he is the Redeemer. Jesus is the Savior. And he told me in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And then everybody started running together. And so when Peter saw it in the 12th verse, he answered the people and said, you men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Why are you so uh, surprised about this? And why are you looking so earnestly on us as though by our own power? I know we talked about this last week. But by our, our holiness that we made this man to walk. He said, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. We serve and worship that same God. Come on now. The Godhead didn't change because the centuries did. The Godhead didn't change because the, the, the scriptures weren't, wrote, weren't, weren't written at the time. Jesus Christ, that's why the Bible says it speaks of him. Not just in saying God, but it says Jesus Christ. The same. The same. We're going to say he is the same God. Yesterday and today and forevermore. So this same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus, praise God, whom, listen, and, and, and he let them know, you, you crucified an innocent man, innocent lamb, whom you, deliver, whom you delivered up, whom you, listen, let me get this, let me get straight now. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Ain't that something? Pilate was trying his best, well, as far as they say, to let him go. But to be honest with you, it wasn't the will of God that he could turn him loose. He was party to the crucifixion too. He, he's just as guilty as everybody else, even though he said, I watch my, now some of us do. Say, I'm neutral. No, you're not. The Holy Ghost ain't got no neutral button on it. You, you, you either with God or you're not. You either saved or you're not. You, you're either with righteousness or you walk with wickedness. He, either way, there's no neutral zone. You can't straddle the fence. God's not looking for, for wavering minded weak people. Come on now. God doesn't make you weak. Hallelujah. He tells us even when we're weak, we're strong because our strength lies in him and we stand on the strength of God. Listen to this. He said, you, did, to Pilate, you denied him, but when Pilate was determined to let him go, have mercy. He said, I'm not going to be guilty of the blood of this just man. He, he, he knew that for envy, the people delivered him, but it was God's will. He didn't have that understanding. Listen, praise God. But you, in the 14th verse, but you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. We just talked about Barabbas the other week, didn't we? Yes. Hallelujah. Desired a murderer rather than, than Jesus. Yes. Desired somebody to turn loose, set free, who was a take of life, a mover of sedition rather than the life giver. He just called him the prince of life. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Isn't that something? They had to make the sign where well, they said, uh, and I think they were trying to be funny when they did it. And this was Jesus, the king of the Jews. They made that at the, the time of uh, when they knew he was going to be crucified. Yes. Praise God. But there were uh, two thieves, you know that, crucified with Jesus yes. on Calvary that day on Golgotha's Hill, place of a skull, that same day. Three crosses had already been prepared. 
they knew that three people were going to be executed yes. on the stake, they called it. Yes, sir. Hanged on the tree. That was a Roman way of executing people, letting them yes. suffer and die. Oh, hallelujah. See, that third cross wasn't made for Jesus. Barabbas was already in custody. He was going to be executed. That cross was made for Barabbas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, Jesus. That cross was made for us, if you want to put it that way. That cross was made for Barabbas. And Jesus had to carry that cross, you know. And it was heavy. It was heavy. I'm sure all of them were. They were heavy. But uh, the, that cross was already prepared. And before them taking Jesus into custody, maybe the night before or whatever they did, the, the cross was already done because the executions were already scheduled to take place. Those two thieves and Barabbas. So the crosses were made. And the, 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 the people desired they said, say, give us Barabbas. Say, what am I going to do with Jesus? Crucify him. Set Barabbas free. Crucify Jesus. That was horrible. And to know that you, hallelujah, Jesus. It's just, I don't know, y'all have to, excuse me. It's just something. Yes, how that, uh, yeah, we, he carried, he did. If you want to look at it like that, us being, we, you know, our soulish nature being Barabbas, he died for our sins. He died so that we could best be set free and so that we could live in glory with him so that we could reign in life, as Romans tells us. We can reign as kings. That's what kings do. They, they reign. We can reign in life right now with him. He paid the price for all our sins, took our sicknesses, our diseases, gave us his righteousness, gave us his healing, his health. Gave us his peace, everything. But to, to know that, that, that they laid that cross on that savagely beaten back of Jesus, ripped open where his bones were showing. Yes, sir. And the folk, the folk knew that. And they knew he was innocent. They knew he hadn't done anything. He, he, he hadn't broken any, had kept all the laws, had, hadn't transgressed anything. And they denied, they denied him. They didn't want him free. They, and, and, but that was the will of God. That was the will of God for him to go to Calvary. And that's what, what Peter is talking to him about. He said that, that, that you, you denied him. You denied the Holy One and the justice and desired this murder of Barabbas to be turned loose. And you killed the Prince of Life whom God raised from the dead. He said his name saints of God. His name through faith. In his name, you have to trust in his name. Who it is, who it represents, and what it represents. The full power and authority of the kingdom of God is represented in that one name. And when you hold that name over, anything that's going on in your life, that's why you don't just say, hey, you get out of here. You didn't know. In the name, and you mean that. What's in you, you call it up. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I command you to go from here right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, set him free. In the name of Jesus, confusion, get out of my house. You're not welcome here. In the name of Jesus, poverty, I rebuke you. I will never see you again. I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. Poverty is a spirit. In the and mean it. And what you're actually doing is calling on the full authority. We don't see it. Like when Elijah said, Lord, open the eyes of the young man to let him see. And when, and when he opened the eyes of his servant Gehazi the, it, to, to see what was really going on, when, when, they thought, when, when Gehazi thought that they were, they were surrounded by the enemies, God, the Spirit of God opened his eyes. So Elijah prayed, let him see. And he looked, and all around the mountains 
with chariots of fire and horses and angels surrounding the enemy. We don't know who we got with us. And when you call on that name, through faith in this name, you call the full authority of the universal government of God. That's it right there. The power of God. And it, it means a whole lot more than in the name of the law. The law ain't got nothing on, on, on the name Jesus. In the name of Jesus, then that name, you know what it represents. When people, and it's just a man standing at the door saying in the name of the law, oh, that's a man. But you know what, he, what he's representing. It's, it's the law, the government of that city or, or county or whatever it is. And that's the way we have to live, giving homage to that name, respect to that name, and uh, the, not with the acknowledgement of who that name represents, what it represents, and the authority, full weight of power that it carries, the anointing of God. In the name of Jesus, they say that even the demons are subject to us through your name. That means so much. Pray over your business in the name of Jesus. Pray over your home. Pray over yourself. I get plagued sometimes with different things, and, and, and I do. <laughs> if I wake up in the night, in the name of Jesus, you evil demon, if, I, if something's hitting my mind, you get away from here with that thought. In the name of Jesus, go away. Do not come back again. You can tell them they're going to they're try to get back sometime or another. <laughs> but they'll leave. In the name of Jesus. Just never choose Barabbas over Christ. Never choose your own way, your own will, your own desires over the will of God for your life. Live and walk in his name. Give, give honor to the name Jesus. And he went on to say, I'm about to close out. He says, and it says here, let's see, his name through faith in his name. Has done what? Made this man strong, his name through faith in his name. Whom you see and know, you know this man. The faith which is by him, by the Lord Jesus, has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. The name of Jesus. And then it says in the eighth, let's go fourth chapter, eighth verse. And then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. Peter, see, he, he required a newfound boldness, a new confidence that didn't come from his own. This confidence didn't come from his old fleshly nature. Peter, Peter being a fisherman, a waltzman, visited the, the taverns and, and, and the houses of ill repute on, on, the, on the wharf and on, along the docks, being a brawler, a man's man that he was. He could probably handle himself. But this strength, this boldness did not come from that old Barabbas of Peter. It didn't, this was by the anointing of God. And this is what you want. This is what you want. Then Peter being filled with the Holy Ghost said unto them, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed, the good deed now, done to the impotent man, by what means he's made whole, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, he pointed it out to him again, didn't he? Whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him, does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone, Jesus is the stone which was set at naught by you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, only in this name Jesus. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So any church, any religion, any belief system, whatever it is, that's claiming salvation through any other person, any other name other than the Lord Jesus Christ, that's a false religion. That's a false religion. And there's some religions, some don't, don't even, 
one of the, the problems of one, I forgot which one, is they, they have a hard time believing that God had a son. That's a, he's God, he don't need a son. See, they don't understand the mystery of the Godhead. That's a mystery spoken of from, from the beginning to, to Colossians, even the mystery been hidden from ages to Timothy, talking about how, how the, the elders and deacons of the church, especially all the people of the church, should understand the mystery of godliness. To know it, be well acquainted with it, comfortable with it. Should be no confusion about it. Jesus Christ is Lord. There is no other name, no other wisdom, no other book. You can read nothing. That's, that's something that will bring you salvation. And I, I'm learning something about God when we had the message on, on the cross and what He did. He died for our sins, save, to save us from our sins, shed blood, to pay the price without the shedding of blood, no remission of sins. But in that, in his crucifixion, in his suffering, in his shame, all of it, he made us recipients of so much more in this salvation. There's no salvation. Our lives have been wonderfully salvaged by God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. By God himself, through that one person. And I don't care what people are talking about, who they're talking about. Buddha, Confucius, the Allah. And, and uh, what does Allah mean? God, our Father. Abba means Father. No other name. No Buddha, no nobody. No Allah, nobody. Under heaven. Given whereby we must be saved except that name Jesus. All the salvation you need in and for your life to, to, eat, to eat, to be fed from the hand of God, all, all that comes from him. The, the Bible even says that he, he left glory. He became, the Bible says, I think it puts, puts it this way, I think it's in Corinthians. He became poor that we could be rich. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He did. And, and uh, there's a, a, a perfect example, of, a picture of what absolute poverty looks like. And it's in either Exodus or Deuteronomy, somewhere along in there, it talks, talks about if you don't obey God, if you mistreat him, you, you take God for granted, don't do his, his will or obey his voice, you t worship other gods, that you'll be poor and you'll be naked and ashamed and hungry and something else. And that's the whole picture of poverty. You know? But the Bible tells us, that he became poor so that we could be rich. Jesus took care of everything for us. With his stripes, we are healed. And just everything for us. We have peace through him. We, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. How can we have peace? Because our sins have been forgiven. Yes, Hallelujah. Praise God Almighty. Thank you, oh, God. Hallelujah. How can we? How can we, the Bible says, it speaks of, of it in Hebrews, say, how can we neglect so great a salvation which was at first spoken to, uh, to us by the Lord, yes, by God? How can we neglect that salvation and not give honor to God and pay tribute to Jesus and, and really appreciate what he's done for us? Praise God for his goodness. And if you don't know him today, maybe today, Maybe today, receive him as your Lord and Savior. Receive Jesus. Re re receive the, the, the Holy Spirit of God. Receive him as yours. Let, let him know, I want to meet you. Because when you meet Jesus, something happens. You don't keep wrestling with the with same stuff all the time. Something happens. Hallelujah, Jesus. Things change. Something happens because you, you've got, you, 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 when you need something to, to happen in your life, you need somebody in your life who can make it happen. You ever, people say that all the time, make it happen. Because we can't, we, God empowers us to make things happen. The only person who can make your life happen is Jesus. Come on now. He can make it happen for you. And he will. That's what he came for. To give you life. The prince of life. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's all about Jesus, saints. Nothing else outside of him. And when you get that, when you get that, it's, and we try to deal with things so, in so many different ways. Uh, 
it's funny. Now, I, I used to be, I had all kinds of jobs, different kinds, laborer, all kinds of stuff. I, I remember uh, getting out of uh, military and, and working like in a foundry, and, and it, was, it was hard, it was work, you know. I, I remember working as, as uh, in, in janitorial service, people making big money, by the way, in the janitorial business. That's where you want to be if you, if you are, are going to be into that. But I, I never tried to fool myself about what I was doing or where I was. Uh, what do they call them today? They won't say, oh, I, I'm a, a custodian, which is, and this, Listen, there's honor in honorable work. Why? Because why? Because he who has to him that has shall be given. You can always do better, you know? And that's what you look for in life. Always do better. Don't just say, well, this is where I am. This, this is my permanent uh, area of, of uh, employment residence. Don't take it like that. Move, do better. You can always do better. But I remember doing janitorial work, everything. Just just all kinds of stuff, all laborer, just all kinds of different work, you know, uh, responsibility, you know, family, kids and all, just this stuff. So, so you have to do a lot, but I never said, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a sanitation engineer. <laughs> See, we like to lie to ourselves. Come on now. Call a spade a spade. Come on now. Call it what we don't. Why do we? We don't like to address issues for what they are. Call it, and, and and that's and that's what gets us in trouble in life. We hate to look at problems because do you know that according to this Bible, now we, we we're going to have to deal with some things and don't be embarrassed. In this Bible, it shows that some people who have been orthodox. Jews, people who loved God, who attended the synagogues and the temples on a regular basis and were faithful in their doings. Some of those were demon influenced. Those people were afflicted, some of them. Some sicknesses, were not all, but some sicknesses were brought on because of demon in, demonic influence. That's Bible. That's Bible. And in order for people to be healed from certain things sometimes, you have to address that spirit of influence, that demonic spirit of influence. When people have problems in their homes, most times they come from rebellion. You know, absolutely, just, that, that's it. That's, that's what got the whole creation out of whack. That's what happened to Adam and Eve. What happened to Lucifer. He rebelled because of his pride. He, he rebelled, brought sin on everybody. And that's, that's the state that man, fallen man is in. All of fallen men lives in a state of rebellion against God. That's why the Bible says they've all done what? They're all gone out of the way. They turned on God. They each turned to their own way. And for sake, they have rebelled against God because of sin, the fallen nature of Adam. That's what it's about. The primary thing is pride and rebellion. That's what brought, so you have to address things for what they are. Deal with issues in your life, in your family, for what they are. Call it what it is, this, this demonic spirit of rebellion. If it's in your family, get rid of it. Call it what it is. Now, and you find that when, in speaking of the old man, I'm, well, I'm, I'm going to close out, but I have to just share this with you. In reading the, the word of God, none of us have, has, in, in dealing with the old man, or the carnal nature of man, anything like that, has ever seen where that old nature of, of Barabbas or the old man or, or that lost nature of, of fallen man, it was never dealt with by, well, we're just going to take it to the psychologist. Are we going to give it a pill? Or are we going we're gonna to call it something else? Uh, maybe they're just having a little displacement and apprehension about <laughs> anxieties, the anxieties of life. And we'll, we'll placate them right now. We'll just, you know, we'll just go along with it. Yeah. They didn't deal with that. It was the old man. The way that the word of God talks about it is to do, all, do what happened to Jesus? He was crucified. And in doing so, the Bible says that, that we have been crucified with Christ. That means the old nature of the old man, mortify your members upon earth. 
you need to kill that old nature. Come on there. See, people don't like to say that. Hanging on the cross where it belongs. We are buried with him in baptism. Stop placating stuff. I, I, I understand. We all want to be understandable. But we, we, we soft pedal so much about sin is sickening. Oh, and they just they just have this this spirit this this this, this attitude where they have a, they have a need and and, and and they have a it's it's a sickness it's just a sickness no they got a lust demon don't let him round my children come on come on now it's a lust stop playing it's it's a sickness and some things can't be you can it is sick it'll make it makes a person sick. The old man has to be, by believers now, who are plagued by other things, you take that. To, Jesus died for our sins on Calvary. The Bible says even the, the, the principalities, the ordinances of God, all this stuff, he took all that to Calvary, got it out of our, got it out of our way, nailing it to his cross. He came to, he upheld the law, he kept all the law, fulfilled all the law. We don't have to worry about it. He got everything out of the way. He died for our sins so that we could be free. Don't play around with spiritual stuff that's bothering you in your life and it's recurring. You got a problem. If it's something that you can't shake, you can't get, it seems like no matter what, and, and, and you honestly said, you know, some people honestly, some people just say it just to get off under the helmet. But if you say, "Oh, I'll never do that again," and it makes you and it bothers, it makes you mad to that you messed up, you did something wrong. Oh God, that'll never happen again. I'll never. And, and, and we we get that way. We can pray, "Oh God, I'll never do it again," and it continues to happen. You have a problem. The Bible says, "They that are Christ have done what to the flesh." They have. They've crucified the flesh with their affections and lust. You have to. You have to. I die daily, said Paul, and you have to. You have to. Jesus died for our sins. He has empowered us to live the life that he's called us for. That's what he wants us to do. You're not going to be perfect. No. By no means. But praise God, you can live a victorious life and live without guilt. By his grace, by his mercy. Yes, All in, through, and by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to close out. I thank God for his word. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.